Batman, 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 never use a gap, man, never turn like a bad fan. Hey, look, if you clicked on this video, let's just keep it real. You already know what we're about to talk about. So, is it actually easier to score in today's NBA? That is what the discussion is finna be about. But before we go ahead and jump into the vid, look, hit that subscribe button if you're new here. And if you like what I do, make sure you guys follow me on all these social media platforms for more daily NBA hoop, whatever you want to call it, content. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get it started. But uh, a lot of things went on. But as far as LeBron and, and, and Michael, if Michael played in this era, he'll average 50. They average 50 points. In this game, it's more of, you know, small ball, you know, I mean, it's, which personally I don't really care much for. I mean, I like kind of smash mouth, you know, old school basketball because that's what I grew up watching, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, I also think it's it's much, much less physical, much, much less physical. I mean, some of the flagrant fouls that I see called nowadays is just makes me nauseous. I mean, you can't you can't touch a guy without it being a flagrant foul. Is there a way to ever reverse that, you think? I don't know. I mean, you know, kids might be a little too sensitive for that nowadays. Now, one thing I want to clear up before we even get started is this is not going to be a LeBron versus Michael Jordan video. You've seen thousands of those all over the internet. This is simply a comparison, a comparison between eras to determine which one was actually truthfully harder to score in. Now, you just heard two players who speak and they spoke about the eras that they played in. Dennis Rodman played in the 90s and he said, hey, it was harder to score back then. If Michael played today, he would average 50. Now, obviously that's an extreme exaggeration. I don't think it's possible for anybody to average 50 ever, except Will, who did it in the 60s. But to say that anybody would average 50 is just ridiculous. But his point has to be taken, and that is it is easier to score in today's league. Then you listen to Kobe Bean Bryant, rest his soul, who then spoke and said, look, today is very soft, it's all finesse, and there's no physicality to the game of basketball. Now, what could he mean by that exactly? Well, the rules in today are just simply different than when Kobe was coming up or when Dennis Rodman played. In today's league, it's more geared around the offense. It's, it gives the offensive player the edge. And that is just for one reason and one reason only, to attract more casual basketball fans. Because at the end of the day, a casual fan wants to see offense. They want to see dunks. They want to see threes. They want to see high scoring, fast paced basketball. No casual fan wants to see defense. That is just the cold, hard truth. So when you're a hardcore super NBA fan, that is actually bad because we do like to see defense. We like to see things be difficult, but we are vastly outnumbered by casuals. And because of these things, yes, it is indeed easier to score in today's league than it was in, let's say, the early 2000s or the 90s when Michael played, when Dennis played, and when Kobe Bryant played. It was and is easier to score in today's league now why is that let's take a look at a few things and a few rule changes now first up in the year 2004 the nba took away the hand check and if you would take a look on the screen i have it right there for you following the 2003 2004 nba season the nba banned hand checking of perimeter players the league hoped that cracking down on pushing or grabbing would give the game's offensive players more room, increase scoring, and create more fan-friendly aesthetics. Now, why would they want to do that? They would do that simply to create and more create more interest and more, I guess you can call, appealing basketball to casual NBA fans. So that is the first rule or difference between the past eras and today's game. That was simply implemented just to increase scoring. Now, two seasons prior to that rule being implemented, the NBA also added another rule. And this rule is known as defensive three seconds. Now, what is this rule and why was it implemented? Well, defensive three seconds states that no defensive player can stand within the colored painted area for longer than three seconds. <laughs> Surprise, like, come on, that was, that was obvious. And why would they do that? Well, it's quite simple. If you're not allowed as a defender to stand in the paint, that creates more space for the offensive player. So this gives the offensive player more of an advantage to create crazy plays, crazy dunks, crazy layups around the basket. It gives them more freedom and more space. 
Back when Michael played, this rule didn't exist. Centers could actually sit in the paint and wait and defend or block your shot. But since they have only three seconds to stand in the paint, they can't really do that as effectively as they once were. Now next up, let's go ahead and talk about double teams. There's this weird misconception that back in the 90s, double teams just weren't allowed. However, that is objectively false and I'm not sure if they've ever even done a Google research or anything like that, but for the people who say that, that's just literally wrong. There were double teams back in the 90s and early 2000s and so on and so forth. And in fact, double teams back in those days had to actually be hard committed double teams. In today's NBA, you're allowed to soft double. In other words, pretty much kind of shadow the guy who's defending the guy, if that makes sense. Whereas back when Jordan played or back, you know, in er Kobe's early days, double teams had to be straight committed and all the way through you couldn't half-ass it so to speak you had to make your intentions known and double team all the way now as you can see this is another shred of evidence to point to the fact that it is indeed easier to score in today's league back in the 90s and early 2000s there was hand checking there was no defense of three seconds and double teams had to be more aggressive than they are today now next up let's go ahead and talk about officiating because this is probably the biggest difference between scoring today and scoring in the past in today's game the officials have a huge huge tendency to just blow the whistle at any and everything and we know this in fact james harden in his career has attempted more free throws than shots yes you heard me correctly james harden has attempted more free throws than shots in his career and this season as well trey young has attempted more free throws than shots now what does that tell you that tells you that refs whistles are soft they're so soft in fact that just two seasons ago we saw lebron james defend chris paul with his hands behind his back because he was scared of the refs blowing the whistle and what you don't believe me roll the footage first foul just under we talked about keeping your hand out the cookie jar houston being one of the toughest teams to guard so look what lebron does you know how you tell your nephew I play you with one arm behind my back? Well, he's not doing that. Now, here's an example of a foul call in today's game. Now, James Harden takes Kyle Kuzma off the dribble, gets to the basket, and Kyle Kuzma basically grazed him. And in this possession, literally nothing happened. I'm going to let you see that one more time. Where is the foul here? His hands are literally nowhere near him. That is a foul in today's NBA. Well, let's see how that stacks up to how officiating was back in the 90s. Take a look, please. And a guard here. Now look at the triple team as Sally and Rodman collapsed on Jordan, and Jordan is still down. Here again, the implementation of the Jordan rules. Three guys are going to be around him at every turn, particularly... So these are the type of calls MJ got, but look at the type of calls Trey Young gets. Yes, this play was a foul. Are you kidding me? This goes to show the supreme, or should I say extreme, difference in officiating between the two eras of basketball. So I just need somebody to explain to me how in the world is it harder to score in today's game. Please. I'm not trying to discredit today's league in any way, shape, or form. There's so much great young talent all over the world right now. So that is not what this video is about. This video is about disproving the lies and myths told by so many people on the internet, just people who are uneducated about the game of basketball. It was objectively harder to score the basketball back in the 90s when Michael played or in the early 2000s. But that doesn't really mean much in terms of great players. When you're a great transcendent player, that means you can play in any era. LeBron James would definitely still be an all-time great player if he played in the 90s. So would Michael Jordan if he played today. It's that simple. When you're a great player, you transcend the rules. You transcend the era that you played in. So it doesn't matter what the rules are. Now, that's pretty much all I have for you guys today. If you like what I do, if you like the video, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It really does go a long way. And follow me on all these social media platforms for more content. So with that being said, I'm up out of here.